for more on Yemen's crisis, we're joined by Peter Bechtold. He's a former director of Near East and North Africa Studies at the U.S. Foreign Service Institute. Welcome back to the show, Peter. Thank you. Just a moment ago, we heard about the discussion of a new Arab force. I'd like to get your thoughts on it. What do you think it'll mean to the region? Do you think it'll destabilize it even more? Or do you think it would just complicate relationships even more than what we see now? Well, uh, there's a model in uh, history. There has been a joint Arab force uh, when Iraq tried to annex Kuwait the first time, which was after independence in 1962. Uh, and it actually worked as a stabilizer. Uh, you can also argue that uh, the uh, Lebanese civil war was partially stabilized by an intervention from the Arab League. So it is conceivable. Can you describe the impact of foreign intervention so far in Yemen, especially with so many competing interests and competing groups? How do you see this playing out? Well, uh, <laughs> you know, Yemen has been unstable for centuries, and especially in the last uh, half century since the last imam died. And uh, we've had three civil wars going on in Yemen, north against south, uh, religious against secular and also um, the, uh, the, 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 you know, the Houthis, who are really a Zaidi form of Shia Islam against the uh, Shafi uh, Sunnis. And uh, the Saudi intervention or the Saudi-led intervention is going to unify the Yemenis more um, because Saudi Arabia has long interfered in Yemeni affairs, usually by playing one side off against the other. But when you have airstrikes and civilian casualties, as your setup reported, um, this is more likely to bring the Yemenis together because they're quite nationalistic. Peter, we're a few days into this Saudi air campaign. Um, what do you make of it so far? What do you think the end game is of this? Well, you know, the thing about end games is that you just keep going on. Uh, uh, Yemen, uh, your audience should understand, is an amazing country. It is physically beautiful in the mountains and uh, the people. It's one of the most colorful places on earth, but it is ungovernable. And Saudi Arabia has worried about Yemen going back to the 1930s. Uh, the Yemenis themselves never had a government that had control over more than the capital area. If you go out at night uh, 30 miles in any direction, you were in enemy territory. So uh, the Yemenis are looking for stability, and the Saudis have decided to take sides. And uh, the Sunni states agree with the Saudis, and the Shia states disagree. So um, uh, th the question is, will they uh, increase the attacks and kill more people, which is inevitable when you bomb from, from the distance? Peter, you know, you spoke about the long history of instability in the country. Do you foresee another civil war evolving in Yemen as we speak? Well, we, we already have a civil war. Uh, we've, we've had several, in fact, uh, no later than 9, uh, 9, 2011, when uh, we had these rival demonstrations uh, in Sana'a, and you could see the different parties yelling at each other. At the time, it was a civil war of sorts, but it was not terribly violent. Uh, it could become more violent because the majority of the Yemenis on the religious side are Sunnis. They are not going to accept minority rule by the Zaydis, and in that they will have the support of Saudi Arabia and at least eight other Arab states. On the other hand, um, the quality of the previous leader who has had the support of the Gulf states and of the United States, Mansur Hadi, has been very poor. And, uh, you know, he fled from the capital to the south, and then from the south to a port, and nobody helped him in Yemen. So he doesn't have much support. And when the West and Saudi Arabia are trying to reinstall him, uh, this does not look very promising.
All right, Peter Bechtold, thank you uh, so much as always for your time. We appreciate your perspective.